Here at CSXT, we're concerned with two things, getting our customers' goods where they're supposed to be, when they're supposed to be there, and doing it safely. The new two-way end-of-train telemetry systems now in operation give our railroad a new level of operational safety and, if used properly, don't cause train delays. That's good. But when the systems aren't set up and operated properly, that causes delays. And if trains aren't moving, it costs money. That's not good. To meet our goals and keep our commitments to our customers, we need to keep these systems running smoothly. This program will explain what the two-way telemetry system is, how it works, and how to keep it working. In addition to this overview video, mechanical and transportation department employees will receive additional information specific to their craft. Remember, if you're an employee of CSX, it's not somebody else's problem. It's yours, and making it work is up to you. EOT, or End of Train Telemetry Systems, consist of both a head-end unit, the HTD, and a rear-end unit, the EOT. The one-way systems, which transmit rear brake pipe pressure and other information from the EOT to the HTD, have been used for years as a way of improving safety and reducing accident risk. The FRA has mandated that trains expected to exceed 30 miles per hour or enter heavy grade territory must now have a properly operating two-way telemetry device. The two-way system does the same things that the one-way system does, but it's also capable of sending a signal from the head-end unit to the rear-end unit to initiate an emergency brake application at the rear of the train. This is necessary so that in the event of a blockage, such as a kinked hose or closed angle cock, the train can still be stopped safely. Whenever a train arrives in a yard, the yardmaster makes decisions as to who handles removal of the EOT. Regardless of who performs the task, the main concern in removing the EOT is always safety. So always use pro-back lifting principles. If it's determined that the device can be removed safely, it's very important that the EOT be properly placed on a designated rack, not left on the ground. The single largest defect on these units is due to moisture, which enters the device through open battery doors or through the condensation release hole in the bottom of the unit. Proper handling and placement on the rack will prevent these costly defects from occurring. After the EOT arrives at the prepping facility, it must be checked for damage or defects. Also, the battery must be removed and placed on the supercharger for conditioning. Fresh ones are installed and the EOT is prepped and bench tested. The purpose of the bench test is to ensure that the HTD will send a signal to the EOT and enable it to make an emergency brake application from the rear of the train. The process involves testing both the front and rear units to determine that they are functioning properly and communicating with each other and making sure that the emergency air valve on the EOT unit is in working order. EOTs that pass all tests at the prep facility are made available to outbound trains by placing them on a designated ready rack. Once an EOT system has been bench tested and released from the prep facility, it's not necessary to perform an emergency test when installing the system, provided the outbound locomotive engineer has been informed of the test. If the outbound engineer is not notified of a successful bench test, the EOT's emergency braking and communication systems must be tested at the train site. After a two-way EOT device is prepped, it's installed in much the same manner as the one-way system. Turn the EOT handle until the coupler hook lies flat. Then insert the hook into the top coupler coring hole and tighten the handle until the hook rotates upright and draws the EOT firmly into place. Finally, press the EOT test button to activate the device. If you're installing a pulse device, you'll see a series of conical lock washers at the end of the handle. If the washers are compressed together or flattened, the EOT is properly applied. If there is space between the washers, the handle may need to be tightened further. An additional safeguard for the pulse device is the safety cable. 
After the device is securely installed, align the handle with the EOT's lock hole and secure the handle. Then press the EOT test button to activate the device. Before a locomotive is dispatched to an outbound train, the locomotive servicing center is responsible for bench testing its HTD to determine that it's functioning properly. Before a train can leave the yard, the HTD has to be armed. Remember, a proper job briefing must be held prior to performing this procedure. When preparing to arm the HTD, the car inspector or other employee should be communicating with the engineer to make sure that they are each in position and ready to complete the arming procedure. CSX currently uses four different HTD designs. The most common unit is the HTD Direct Unit. There are some very important steps that must be followed to successfully arm the two-way system regardless of which design is used. If the EOT has had batteries replaced or has been laid on its side, the test button on the EOT must be re-engaged. Remember that if you are using a UP device, the reset plunger must be pushed in before arming. Be sure that both the engineer and other employee are ready to perform the procedure. Set the unique EOT ID code into the HTD. Once the test activation button is pushed on the EOT, the engineer or other qualified employee must push and release the communications test arm button on the HTD within five seconds or the test will fail. If the test fails for any reason, wait at least 20 seconds before attempting the procedure again in order for the system to clear its memory. The device will not arm if the memory is not cleared. Remember, never hold buttons down on the EOT or the HTD. Always press and release the buttons. It's very important to arm these systems properly before departure. Failure to do so restricts our ability to move our customers' goods in a timely manner. CSX Transportation cannot operate a safe and efficient rail operation if our trains are not properly equipped with two-way telemetry devices when necessary. There has been some confusion as to what constitutes an en route failure and how to respond to HTD messages. There are only five situations that constitute an en route failure and require immediate corrective action. If the emergency brake application from the rear can't be initiated, an error message indicating a front-to-rear communications failure appears, a dead battery message appears, an emergency air valve circuit failure message appears if the HTD unit is not armed. It's important to understand that these five situations are the only ones that require immediate corrective action. Refer to the printed support materials for specific error messages on your particular HTD system. If an en route FRA failure does occur, the speed of the train must be reduced to 30 miles per hour unless it is a local or work train with 4,000 trailing tons or less. In addition, the train will not be permitted to operate over a section of track with an average grade of 2% or more over a distance of two continuous miles until corrective action is taken. We hope that this overview has been useful in helping you to understand the EOT two-way telemetry operation and procedures. Understanding and proper application of EOT systems will help maintain CSXT's position as a leader in both safety and efficiency among rail carriers. Refer to the video and support materials for your particular department for complete instructions on EOT procedures for your area of responsibility. Every now and then, the unthinkable happens. It could be as simple as a kink in the brake pipe or a closed angle cock. A situation arises that calls for emergency braking. The air brakes don't respond properly, and what started out as a routine run ends up in disaster. That wreck might have been avoided if the train were equipped with a two-way telemetry system. Without it, the engineer had no way of initiating an emergency brake application from the rear of the train. 
As you learned from watching the EOT overview video, the FRA two-way telemetry law is in full effect. Two-way telemetry does improve the safety of our railroad. And when proper procedures and guidelines for maintaining and operating EOT systems are followed, it won't slow us down. The FRA mandates that trains traveling over grades of 2% or more for two continuous miles, or that exceed 30 miles per hour, must be equipped with an armed and operational two-way telemetry device, except for the following examples. Trains capable of making an emergency brake application through a crew member or a remotely controlled consist that is in radio contact with the lead locomotive and located in the rear third of the train. Trains operating in push mode in radio communication that are capable of making an emergency brake application from the rear of the train. Trains with manned cabooses or shoving platforms in radio communication that are capable of an emergency air brake application. Trains with a fully independent secondary braking system that is capable of stopping the train in case the primary system fails. Trains that only operate on tracks that are not part of the general railroad system. Passenger trains with emergency brakes. In addition to the exemptions you just heard about, work and local trains with 4,000 trailing tons or less are exempt from the two-way telemetry laws. If these work and local trains are traveling over grades which are 2% or greater for two continuous miles as defined in special instructions, they must be equipped and armed with two-way telemetry or meet one of the criteria we just discussed. So as you can see, the vast majority of our trains have to be equipped with the two-way EOT devices. And in order to meet our commitments to our customers in a timely and efficient manner, CSX employees need to know how to service and operate these systems properly. The EOT installation and arming procedure begins with the yardmaster or mechanical department employee who assigns an EOT to a particular train. If the system has already been bench tested at a prep facility, the ideal situation, the locomotive engineer must be notified that the bench test has been completed successfully. If it has, install the EOT unit according to the procedures outlined in your support materials and the EOT overview video. At the point of installation, the EOT system can be armed by two qualified employees one at the rear end and one at the head end of the train. Remember to hold a job briefing before beginning this task, enabling the head end person to be in position to press the communications test arm button within five seconds. The first step in arming any EOT system is to push the EOT test button to activate the device. Next, establish communication with the head end person using proper radio procedures and inform that person of the EOT identification number. After charging the air brake system, an accuracy check of the air brake pressure is required. Head of train and rear of train pressure cannot vary by more than plus or minus three pounds. On the CW44AC, CW60AC and SD70AC locomotives, the EOT systems can only be armed and disarmed through the locomotive's computer screens. If you're arming a system on a CW44AC, begin at the main operating screen, which will display a series of zeros in the lower right corner. Press the F3 key to get to the operator function screen, and then press F3 again to get to the EOT setup screen. Use the F1 through F5 keys to input the correct EOT identification code, then press F6 to enter the code. The person at the rear of the train will press the test button of the EOT, causing the arm now message to be displayed in the status text. Press and release the F7 key on the computer screen within five seconds to complete the arming procedure. The status text should read, armed. When arming a CW60AC, start at the main operating screen, which will read 0000-0 on the lower right corner. Press the 2 key to display the end of train screen. 
press the F3 key, then use the number keys to enter the EOT identification code, then press F7 to save it. After the ID code is saved, the screen will change back to the EOT setup screen. When the person at the rear of the train pushes the test button of the EOT, the status text on the computer display will read ARM NOW. Press and release the F7 key within five seconds to complete the arming procedure. The status text should read ARMED. To arm the system on an SD70AC, start by pressing the EOT IDENT button. Then enter the EOT identification code and press ENTER IDENT. The screen will display System Unarmed. When the person at the rear of the train pushes the test button of the EOT, the COM test label changes to ARM NOW. Press the ARM NOW button within five seconds and the EOT status text should change to EM Enabled. If you're using an HTD direct unit, the EOT identification number is dialed in to the HTD. The person at the rear will push the test button of the EOT, which will cause the ARM NOW message to be displayed on the message display of the HTD. The engineer must then press and release the communications test ARM button on the HTD within five seconds. If the arming procedure is successful, the ARMD message will appear on the HTD display. The system is now armed. Remember, no matter which device you're using, when the person at the rear of the train pushes the EOT test button, the engineer must respond by pressing and releasing the appropriate button on the HTD within five seconds or the system will not arm.